My name is Damian Williams, and I'm the United States Attorney here in the Southern District of New York. Sam Bankman-Fried perpetrated one of the biggest financial frauds in American history, a multi-billion dollar scheme designed to make him the king of crypto. But here's the thing. The, crypto, the cryptocurrency industry might be new. The players like Sam Bankman-Fried might be new. But this kind of fraud, this kind of corruption is as old as time. And we have no patience for it. Ha ha ha. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is the bearable ball here. And I got this aggressively average content for you today. As the crypto industry did not allow this man to ruin everything. Crypto had a Sam Bankman Freed problem, not a crypto problem. And right now, justice has been served. We did not let SBF destroy the space. And now we're going on a bull cycle of epic proportions. And especially for XRP, the month of November continues to look like a very special time to be holding our favorite digital asset. As we take a look, Brad Garlinghouse stated that the Ripple Quarter 3 report is now live for everyone to read. And while I'm very well aware that most people have already covered the Quarter 3 report, what I want to point out to every single one of you is something I've been discussing over the past couple weeks. Ripple stated, throughout quarter three, Bitcoin's correlation to the S&P 500 has hit historic lows at 0.23, and XRP also exhibited a low correlation of 0.16 over that same period in time. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because I've been telling all of you to do nothing but observe and see whether or not the S&P 500 stocks and the crypto space are going to begin depegging a little bit. That is a very real possibility. And if that is in fact the case, oh baby, it's going to be a special time to be alive. As money needs to go somewhere. And if money is going to be leaving the stock market for the crypto space, we're going to get a big influx of capital flowing into some of our favorite digital assets, especially as a Bitcoin ETF is on its way to get approved in the coming weeks or months. We have not seen a complete depegging of crypto and the stock market yet. But all I'm asking you to do is observe, pay attention, because it is more and more likely that it could happen. Now, another message from Ripple. They state for many of the world's central banks, discussions around central bank digital currencies have shifted from if to when they will be introduced and widely used. And remember, James Wallace talked about how 15% of central banks around the world are in discussions with Ripple. And we just got massive confirmation yesterday that Georgia is 100% confirmed to be partnering with Ripple for their central bank digital currency project. More and more countries every single day are coming right here into our ecosystem and it's such a special time to be alive especially post clarity in addition ripple made a historic move in dubai as xrp is the first virtual asset to be approved by the regime the dubai financial services authority has given the green light for xrp's use within the dubai international financial center and this major development positions XRP along with Bitcoin, ETH, and Litecoin, benefiting from the legal clarity of the DIFC and speeding up global value exchange. Dubai continues to lead in the regulation of virtual assets, and they continue to attract more economic growth. The world is shifting, my friends, and yet another day in court finds that the SEC acted arbitrarily and capriciously. And is anyone else concerned about the very troubling pattern of the SEC not having a faithful allegiance to the law? 
Before, it was the DC Circuit and Grayscale. Now, it's the Fifth Circuit and a challenge to its stock buyback disclosure rule. Again and again, federal courts hold that the SEC acted arbitrarily in violation of the Administrative Procedure Act. The third branch remains our last and best hope. The courts are doing their job, and Gary is losing more and more of his power. And that's why I find what's going on in Congress right now so important. Elizabeth Warren finally admits what we've known for months. They want to make self-custody illegal. They're going to try and use the events happening in the Middle East right now as a reason. But I think the courts might save us. But they've showed their hand. Last year, you wrote that, quote, In their attempt to avoid being traced, illegal actors have adopted ever more sophisticated cryptocurrency technologies, such as non-custodial wallets. Now, guys, as we can see... Senator Elizabeth Warren and her anti-crypto army are trying to make self-custody illegal. But what's so interesting is that they use it on the guise of illicit finance. But just imagine if self-custody didn't exist while Sam Bankman freed the biggest scammer and criminal and fraudster who donated to her campaign is over here telling us that we would have been better off having our money on exchanges like FTX, like Celsius, like BlockFi, to get robbed. You see, over the last couple weeks, Senator Loomis has taken heat for inaccurately reporting that illicit finance was tied to crypto assets, directly tied to the problems happening in the Middle East right now. This is a misconception. I don't believe self-custody is going to be regulated out of existence. But politicians don't want it. Because it gives us too much control over our wealth. Isn't that so ironic? The scammers don't like it when we empower ourselves. The criminals in power don't like it when we take power back. Says a lot, doesn't it? And all I'm asking all of you to do is to pay attention to what's going on so you're not caught off guard to what your politicians are doing to you. And quite frankly, I cannot believe they continue to get reelected. Now, ladies and gentlemen, to cap off this video for today, I'm going to get into the macro. And especially tomorrow, I need every single one of you to tune in as we have to break down what's been going on. The U.S. Treasury is going to borrow $776 billion in the final three months of the year. $14 billion, I believe, has just been approved for Israel. And the Treasury said it's looking to borrow even 816 billion between January and March quarter 1, 2024. The Treasury just borrowed 1 trillion in the recent couple months, which ended July through September, the highest ever for that quarter. And all I'm telling you is, we are the most indebted nation in history. The United States will continue to borrow into oblivion as long as it has the U.S. dollar privilege. And you keep telling me that these conflicts going on internationally right now in the Middle East with Russia, Ukraine, potentially with Taiwan and another front is not indicative of the financial state America's in right now. Then you're not paying attention. When a nation collapses... War ensues. And we're in a couple right now. And it's not going to stop. More and more come every single day. But if there's one thing I can say that might give a glimmer of light to the situation. It's the fact that war is bullish for crypto. And at the very least, we can take advantage as sovereign citizens of the inevitable to better our families and our friends and loved ones. We can only control what we can control. And right now we are going into uncontrollable times. 
All I ask you to do time and time again is to pay attention. And we're paying more attention than 99% of the planet. That's why we will become the new 1%. And I promise you all the bullshit we've gone through through the years will all be worth it. Justice has been served with Sam Bankman Freed. Justice will be served to these corrupt politicians. And finally, justice will be served for the XRP army. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the bearable ball here. Thanks for tuning in. As always, I appreciate every single one of you. Now I'll be back tomorrow with another video.